back in my bag. I'm Tony Allen, and we're here with a special Dot Next edition of Beers with Engineers in fabulous Las Vegas. Today, my guest is Stephen Poitras, Principal Solutions Architect. So, Stephen Poitras, author of the Nutanix Bible, arm wrestling extraordinaire, Nutanix fixture. Uh, did I miss anything? Man of many talents. You have a, a, a lighter that you're going to open bottles with too, because yeah. we're we're in a weird situation here in Vegas. My God, that was good. <laughs> One of many tricks from college. So. Yeah, rock on. Yeah. So uh, yeah, thanks for joining us here yeah. at Pleasure Nutanix here. Next 2016. Um, so yeah, we actually we don't have any surprises normally on this show. We have surprise beers that we have to guess, but but we know exactly what we're going to be drinking. Okay, and uh, would you like to pour? Or would you like me to pour? Yeah, I can okay. I can pour, man. Sweet. All good. All right. So, uh, I know you're a big deal in the tanks. You've been here a while. When did you uh, when did you join the company? Uh, so I joined November of 2011. So yeah, almost five years. Nice. Okay. All right, well, there's a lot of head on this one. It's okay. Yeah, no one's <laughs> judging you, right? It's, it's okay. That's, it's going to be good either way. Yep. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, all right, so uh, what brought you to Nutanix? What's your... Uh... Yeah, so I was at uh, Accenture doing uh, tech consulting, and so I basically led the on-premise private cloud offerings, so did a lot of work with FlexPods, VBlocks, um, and basically the whole kind of idea around convergence just made a lot of sense. And one of my coworkers that I used to work with at Accenture, Lucas, uh, he actually said, hey, come on over, check this product out. Really, when did the company start? It was like 2009? Uh, 2009, yep. 2009, yeah, so yep. that's two years then. Okay. Well, yeah, let's give this a try. Thanks for pouring right. it. Let's go for it. Cheers. Cheers. It is the stone arrogant bastard uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're out of California. I could totally be wrong. Yeah, yeah, in California. Rock on. So what is it exactly you do here? What, uh, what is your main role? I know you <laughs> write the Nutanix Bible, right? And everyone knows who you are, but uh, I see you on videos a lot. Explain, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of just a, a mixture. One of the things being here for so long is you kind of work with a lot of groups, do a lot of things. Um, obviously, the Nutanix Bible is just kind of a side project. Um, I used to lot, write a lot of our reference architectures, BPGs, all that sort of stuff. What's a um, BPG? What is that? Uh, Best acronym. practices guy. Uh -huh. Yep. Yep. But I mean, for me, it's all about like working with the engineers. So I love to work with the engineers on new features, um, give them good feedback early on in the cycle so we can make an overall better product. So, so what, what are you uh, currently working on that, that you can talk about, right? Or what's the most recent thing? Yeah, that you've been doing. Yeah, so recently I've been doing a ton of stuff with containers. So containers is after using it, um, I mean it's a game changer. So yeah, there's a lot of good stuff going on with Docker and containers. You know, virtual machines you have to deal with deployment issues, that sort of thing. But with containers, it's kind of like a yum for applications almost. So we're announcing containers at the conference. Yep. Yep. And I mean, one of the biggest things that we bring to the table is data persistence for containers. One of the uh, inherently, containers are ephemeral, meaning you spin containers up and then they basically die or disappear. Um, so getting data persistence is a very important thing, and so that's one of the key uh, key solutions we're actually pushing out. So okay, cool. I have to say, it's like a hundred degrees right now in Las Vegas. We're we're both dying. We have these these dabs because <laughs> we go absolutely crazy. It's it's amazingly dry and hot in this. Las Vegas weather. Yeah, the nice cold beer is good though. Yes, that definitely does. I'm enjoying that. So, uh, so what do you do? Uh, like, so you have the Nutanix Bible as a side project. Uh, are there any other side projects that people may not be as familiar with? Um, yeah, I mean, th th those those are definitely the biggest ones. Um, Work-wise, obviously, I have a lot of side projects um, outside of work. But oh, tell me about those. What's going on? Oh, uh, are they technical side projects? Are they? Just for fun, what's going on? No, just just mainly for fun. Uh, so I love to drive, so I like to work on the car, uh, and then also going to the gym a lot. So you're pretty buff, so you know that's a. <laughs> I need to, I need to do it because all the free food gets yeah. to you. Yeah, so. the utopian Nutanix work environment. Yep, yep. <laughs> okay, so what kind of what's what's your favorite car? What do you drive normally? What's your? your uh, base? So I'm a, you, I'm a huge have? Porsche fan, so I love 911s. Um, my dream car is. A GT3 or GT2. So, 
someday I hope to hope to actually get there. Nice. So yeah, we poured this arrogant bastard. Uh, are you? So what, what do you think of it? Is this is this up to your standard? Do you normally like beers like this? What do you? What's your preference? Yeah, I mean, for for a stronger ale, it's actually not bad at all. Um, personally, normally I go for the yeah, hoppy IPAs or Belgians, but um, yeah, it's it's not a bad beer. Cool. Well, we have a hoppy IPA for you all right. coming up. Perfect. So. Perfect. See? I'm a natural. It was the first time I ever did that. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, you can actually uh, <laughs> use another bottle to open the bottle as well. So you, you do a, a sim similar thing. With another bottle? Yeah. I mean, you want to just you want to just do it? Do you want to like show yeah, me how it's? It, yeah, if you Does want to. Does it open both bottles at once? Uh, no, just just one. Okay. Well, yeah, go for it. Yeah. All right. Show me how this is done. Oh, there you go. I just learn something new every day. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, man. Perfect. Cheers, man. Oh my god, that's so good. That is very good. That is so. I I'm usually a fan of the 60 minute IPA. Yep. But from time to time, I like to treat myself. Go for the 90 minute. Yeah, the Imperial. Yeah. You know, it comes in a four pack and it's like super high ABV. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you don't want to have too many of these during lunch. So. <laughs> Go back to work. <laughs> All right. What are you excited about in technology that's not related to Nutanix? Um, well, I mean, yeah, the whole containers uh, movement and revolution is something that, you know, I think it's just kind of like when I first saw virtualization, the epiphany I had. Um, so containers, what's going around with that, that I think is, is something that's gonna be massive. So virtualization was a huge paradigm shift. Now I think with containers, it's gonna be another paradigm shift as well. So what's, what's the more useful about containers versus a virtual machine? Uh, well, I mean, I think the, the key thing is just the portability. Um, so everything's defined, you have your images, you can mock up your JSON. From there, you can actually deploy anywhere. So I can deploy Ubuntu on a Docker host. I can deploy, you know, a LAMP stack on a Windows host or a Linux host on AWS on-prem. So I mean, the portability is probably the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. um, if you think about virtual machines, virtual machines have a lot of, you know, properties or traits which make them very difficult to transiently move across different environments. So um, containers, I mean, the portability is the key thing, I think. So tell me more about these these uh, traits that don't translate well uh, when you move them around? Is it because there's just so many like like operating system libraries that get like duplicated when you have multiple virtual machines? Or what's going on there? Is it a performance thing? I'm not sure. Yeah, well, I mean, so if you think about it, um, say you wanted to move an application from one operating system to another. Uh, there's dependencies on DLLs, you know, binaries, that sort of thing. Uh, with the container, everything is self-contained. So if you need this version of Java, this version of MySQL, you actually just define that in your image file. Um, and then from there you can actually deploy it wherever. So um, you can deploy it on us, you can deploy it on Amazon, GCP, um, basically anywhere. So, and then that same schema can be used across all those different sites. So can you do like live migrations with containers the same way you do with virtual machines or is that still in the works? Yeah, so it's basically what you do is you swap out a container. So you might kill the container and then start up a new instance of it. Um, so that's where the data persistence is key, because if containers are gonna be ephemeral, meaning once they come up, we're gonna spin them down, spin them back up, uh, the data is actually the most important thing there. So, yeah. So do you wanna give it a shot, trying to open the bottle with the other bottle? Oh man, uh, yeah, I, I guess okay. like, okay. All right, cool. I'm willing to do it. All right, let's do it. drip all over the hip. Man, this, okay, so it's it's pretty much just using it like it's a lighter, like this? Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a pro, I can just go home like completely happy now. Like I don't yep. even need to stay for the conference. This is great. Yep, so you learn a few new things. So Thanks for teaching me. Hey. So I'm personally not a fan of uh, Scottish ales. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry I underserved you here. You can have this one. Hey, it's all good, man. So, well, cheers. Right. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, cheers.
I, you know, I was wrong earlier. I actually like this the most out of all three of the beers. Really? Yeah, it's a, this is actually really good. This changes my whole viewpoint on Scottish <laughs> ales. Uh, this is like floral almost. I just, I like it a lot. I don't know. Yeah. It's like easy drinking, cold, which I appreciate in this Las Vegas heat. Yeah, definitely nice and warm out here. What do you do for fun? Like what's uh, like other than like racing and things like that, like what is it that you, you know, do in life that you love? Yeah, I mean, to be completely honest, I actually love working. Um, okay. <laughs> so that's not, that's not a common theme. Um, but yeah, I mean, coming to work every day is just fun. I mean, writing the new Tanix Bible, like being able to talk to people, customers, answer technical questions, like that stuff is absolutely fun. Um, other than that, music, huge techno trance since I was a, a wee lad. EDM so. guy. Yep. Okay, cool. Yep. So actually, this weekend was EDC. I didn't get a chance oh, to go. EDC Vegas. Yeah, I've heard of this. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I've never been, but uh, I've heard it's pretty awesome. So, uh, so w what got you started on the Nutanix Bible? Like, what made you think, oh, I should probably write this all encompassing document, right? What? Yeah. Um, so. Basically, I used to do our product deep dive for all the new hires, mm -hmm. and so as part of that, I would always whiteboard everything, but my handwriting is actually extremely bad. So, one, I would have to rewrite everything every single week, um, and then also, people probably couldn't actually read what I was writing. So, from there, I was like, well, why don't I actually just write something that goes over this, and then I can just use it as a reference. So I talked to Draj and I was like, hey, you know, I want to start writing about our architecture and how things work. Is that something that you're okay with me pushing out publicly? And uh, he gave the green light and said, go ahead. And it is kind of where it is today. And I mean, I think one of the key reasons that we want to be so open about technology is, you know, it's a huge paradigm shift from what people are traditionally used to with three tier. Um, they're used to a SAN, they're used to fiber channel, they're used to LUNs, zones, all that sort of stuff. Um, with Nutanix, you know, it's a completely different approach. So, you know, we don't want to say, hey, just trust us, be a black box. We actually want to expose and make people comfortable uh, with how we're actually doing things on the back end. And it's actually perfect for us as well because when we expose everything out there, um, you know, there's no architectural flaws or anything like that. Um, so people can become confident in us and also trust the product and solution. Right. So it's not like a black box that no one understands, right? Yeah, we know yeah. I mean, there, there, exactly there's a few happening. companies that are black boxes. And I mean, I don't think it works out well for anyone. Um, you need to understand what's actually going on in the back end to trust something. So cool. Yeah. Well, I like that philosophy. Cheers, man. Yeah, cheers. OK, so I'd say we call it a day here. We've tried all three of these beers. I determined my favorite is the Scottish Ale, which if I, if I was going to bet, since we're here in Vegas, I would not have bet on me liking the Scottish Ale, but yeah, I love that the most. What's, what was your favorite again? Uh, de de definitely Dogfish Head. The Dogfish minute. Head? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. All good, though. Well, thanks for coming out. Uh, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And I'll see you around the conference. All right. Sounds good.